is my latest uh, video. Uh, so let's hit you, John. Doing La Badia de Agrimen, which translates as the uh, Abbey of Crime, apparently. So, anyway, uh, you get like a massive intro. This is double speed because it goes on forever. It tells you basically the background is there's uh, some crimes going on at an abbey. It's not like a bit of shoplifting or something, it's like a murders and stuff like that, you know, it's like real major crime. The game set in the uh, 13th, 13th, 27th, something like that, in, in some abbey in Italy, apparently. Um, it's the, the game inspiration came from Umberto Eco's novel, The Name of the Rose, which is like a, an Italian writer wrote a book. I've never read the book, so I don't know what, if it's crap or good or what. Um, the game was originally released in 1988 uh, in Spain and it was written by the same guy uh, let me try and find his name here quick uh, Paco Menendez who wrote Fred for the Spectrum and like, I love Fred so straight away I'm on, on side with this um, you know, it's, it's pretty good the intro, I mean, like for you know, it's a 128k K spectrum game, uh, but it goes on for a long, long time. I don't want to give a spoiler, but the end pretty much is the same sort of thing, but it goes on for a long time. Anyway, so we start off and we're wandering around this like a uh, abbey. You've got like uh, rules and whatever in place, like you know, you're not allowed obviously to miss things like prayer time and whatever because you are a monk. And you've got like an assistant that scuttles around with you. And like yourself, you can carry four objects at a time. Your assistant can carry two more. So it's like an extra pair of hands. And it can be a right pain in the arse, the assistant, sometimes, you know. So if you, st if you take things off tables, sometimes you get you get threatened by other members of the, uh, what would you call it, congregation or whatever. Um, it's just a weird game. I mean, it's like isometric. It's sort of very alienate or the great escape almost you know like where you have to attend certain things like roll call and stuff in the great escape you have to attend things like uh, meal times and prayer times in this game and it's it's a very very big map it's a huge map i mean like you play this game right yeah you first off start playing it you think oh you know it's going to be like a, a few rooms and uh whatever it's a bit like fairlight in that way you know it's like a really big map and it's got like the controls are very much like one man destroyed or or like Fairlight I guess you know where, where you've got like um, you sort of turn left and right and then move forward you know what I mean it's like that you can't sort of move diagonally or whatever you sort of swing yourself around and then push forward you know so that noise there is the the bell time you know the bell from the church where you have to attend a certain thing. And if you get stuck or lost in a, in the game, you, you can just follow your assistant. He goes straight to where you should be, which is like you know, obviously the, this is I think this is prayer time now. Um, you have meal times as well, where you have to stand around and look at empty plates. So now it's it, it's a pretty good game. It's it's really really complex. It's quite detailed. You know, there's murders uh, going on all throughout the game. And like you just got to sort of like spend your spare time picking up clues and stuff. And the, the weirdest thing is, w w when it's bedtime, if you um, go to bed and then you get up and sneak out around the place, if, if you get caught sneaking around, you get kicked out the, the abbot straight by the abbot straight away. You know what I mean? You get kicked out of the fucking abbey straight away. You you're straight you're gone. It's like you know, pretty severe really. But I don't know if that's sort of uh, historically correct. I don't think if a monk went for a walk late at night on his tod to reflect, he would be booted out of the abbey straight away, you know? Anyway, it's not, it's not a bad game. A lot of puzzling going on. If, you, if you've got the time to sort of spend on doing a game like this, it's all right. The one I'm using now is an English hack version. The original game um, was released by Opera Soft in 1988 
and it was on a compilation tape. Um, don't know. As I say, the controls are a bit like One Man and Destroyed. And uh, it plays a bit like Great Escape, where you've got to be in the right place at the right time. You're not allowed out, you know. I mean, just replace this with the, you know, the barking of dogs and the machine gun towers. You'd be there, wouldn't you? I was surprised with, with Paco's work before. I mean, Fred. I haven't played Sir Fred 2, but F uh, Sir Fred, or Fred, as it was called, was pretty cool. What a cool game that was. Anyway, so you sneak around at night, finding clues, not getting seen by the other monks, and you just get on with your shit, and like, there's nothing more really to add to that, it's just like the, the way it is. Um, I, tell you, I suppose it's a bit like um, school days as well, remember school days where you had to be at the dinner hall at a certain time, or you had to be in a certain classroom, if you get you also get the uh, the abbot sort of threatened you, you know, all the time. I don't know what he's got to hide. I don't want to do a spoiler, but like he has got something to hide. Um, the novice follows you round, and he gets stuck sometimes. So you, you can go a bit on your own if you want, if you don't want to get him stuck. So what else it reminds me of is like uh, Fairlight. But in Fairlight, you had so much sort of interactivity with the objects and the the screen and stuff, and you could. You know, you pretty much play with anything, couldn't you? You shift the tables, chairs, everything around. There's not a lot of that on the, in this game. But it is a complex puzzle. And if you like isometric puzzle games, like movie or whatever, th this is this is a game you probably would consider to play. Anyway, um, the, the worst thing about this game, I think, is the controls. I don't like these, you know, the swingy round controls. Uh, I don't know, I prefer... I just prefer like an up, down, left, right sort of control, you know. I just that's what I prefer. That's just the way I am. I you can hear some machine gun fire in the background. It's my son playing Left for Dead downstairs, and it carries. And I've been waiting to do the audio review in between him playing, like for about two hours now. And like he has this like break, you know, where him and his mates go offline and they have a break. Yeah, we have to regroup themselves and like uh, the next thing. They're online and it's like it sounds like uh, World War Three. So I've been trying my best to sort of uh, they're off. You know, in a minute now you're gonna hear screams and cries. Anyway, there's a lot of sneaking round at night and there's a lot of this this, this reminds me of Great Escape. You know the bit where you're in the tunnel with the torch? Yeah. Only you're using the oil lamps in the uh I don't know in the crime abbey or whatever it's called. Um, and they run out pretty quick, so like you gotta gotta really remember your route, or follow your your sidekick out. Um, what else is to say about this game? It's a nice game. Have a go of it if you like isometric puzzlers. You know, uh, sorry about the gunfire. I'm not actually in the middle of like a a major attack or anything. It's like. The son has got his Left 4 Dead of 2 on. And, er. Uh, actually, Left 4 Dead 2, the intro, that's pretty good. And there's someone else on the way up now, so. I'm liable to be distracted again. What else haven't I said about this game? Uh, I don't know. Keep them down and that is pretty good. Solving puzzles from an isometric point of view, all right. Prefer Fairlight. Uh, the Spanish version of this is fucking murder to play. Believe me, you try playing the Spanish version of it, it's just so difficult. You know, Europeans are so lazy, English people are so lazy learning any other language. I know, like maybe one Spanish word. Agua, which I learnt on uh, Sesame Street, and like, I don't know. I have a go at this game, and it's pretty good. I give it 7 out of 10.